Hey everybody, it's Stephen coming back at you on KITV. And I just want to bless you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank you for taking the time to tune in this week. And uh, I just pray that this season uh, that we take, that it's going to be a real blessing to you, that you're going to be able to take the Word of God and apply it to your lives. And I'm just so thankful that you've taken the time to, to listen to what the Lord has put upon my heart. So before we start, we're going to pray because I have to pray and allow the Lord to just do what He wants to do because without Him, it doesn't matter. Uh, he does everything. So let's go to Him. Father, we thank You for Your love. We thank You for Your mercy. We thank You for Your presence. We thank you for your joy. We thank you, Lord, for your word and for your leading and your guiding. And so, God, I just ask that everybody that's listening within the sound of my voice right now would be blessed. I pray that they would be taught by the Holy Ghost himself. God, I pray that in the name of Jesus, that that which is presented today will make a difference in people's lives and for your kingdom, that it would bring you honor, that it would bring you glory, and that overall, God, that it would draw us so much closer to you. Father, I thank you for, again, your love that you so freely give to us. We don't deserve it, but we receive it, and we thank you for it. We thank you, God, for your presence, and I pray blessings upon everybody that's listening and upon your word right now. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen and amen. So, guys, I just want to thank you again, and uh, we're going to go and look at a very familiar story uh, in the Word of God, and probably most of you that are tuning in would know this. And if you don't, that's even better. But uh, hopefully, at some point, you'll be able to set, get something new out of this, something fresh. And I just pray that the Lord would just bless you and just encourage you with this word. So I want you to go to Second Chronicles chapter 20. And again, we're very, most of us are very familiar with this story if we've been in church for any length of time. And if you haven't, well, then let's go right back to it now. And it says in verse number 20, it says, Now it came about after this that the sons of Moab and the sons of Ammon, together with some of the Munites, came to make war against Jehoshaphat. Then some came and reported to Jehoshaphat, saying, A great multitude is coming against you from beyond the sea. In verse number three, and Jehoshaphat was afraid, and he turned his attention to seek the Lord and proclaimed a fast throughout all Judah. And so Judah gathered together to seek help from the Lord. They even came from all the cities of Judah to seek the Lord. So I wanted to stop here for just one quick second. So what we've got to understand here is that Judah is uh, one of the tribes of Israel. They're part of God's people. And so the other thing that was really impressed upon me as the Lord began to lay this word upon my heart is most of us are familiar with the name Judah means. Well, Judah means praise. So there's an element of praise that's involved here. Anytime that you see Judah throughout the word of God, there's praise. And so this happens to be a tribe. They're named Judah. And there's now uh, the sons of Moab and Ammon, and they're coming to attack Israel. They're coming to attack the land of Judah. Jehoshaphat is the king. And so what happens is there's this great, um, there's this, this great multitude. Now, when you actually look at that word in the Hebrew, it's actually the word hamon. And what it can mean is not only can it mean a great multitude, but it can mean a tumultuous noise. So what we have to understand is that from afar off, there's a bunch of noise that's coming at Jehoshaphat. He hasn't really seen anything yet, but there's this noise. So they are assuming that there is a great multitude. So that's where you get this from. So what happens is, here's a good thing, that Jehoshaphat says, okay, we need to go to the Lord. But what's also very interesting at this is that it says in verse number three, and Jehoshaphat was afraid. It really began to speak to my heart as the Lord began to put this upon, upon me. Because in today's day and age, there are so many people that are afraid. They're, con they're beyond concerned. They're actually afraid. And so what I find very interesting is that when we listen to the news today, and I'm not saying that the news is bad. I'm not saying that your multimedia is bad. I'm not saying that uh, altogether. There are some things that I think you should limit. I'm going to say that. But not all things are bad.
But what I am saying is that if you are listening to that, you could potentially be receiving much more than what actually is. So in the same fashion, there is a great tumultuous noise that's happening. So that noise causes Jehoshaphat to be afraid. And so what he does is he does the right thing and he turns to the Lord and he declares a fast. Now, if we continue to go along here, and it says in verse number five, then Jehoshaphat stood in the assembly of Judah and, and Jerusalem in the house of the Lord of the new court. And he said, O Lord, the God of our fathers, thou art, art thou not God in the heavens? And art thou not ruler over the kingdoms and the nations? Power and might are in thy hand, so no one can stand against thee. He's already declaring that God is almighty in all of the situations that he's going through. Did thou not, our God, drive out the inhabitants of this land before the people of Israel and give it to the descendants of Abraham, thy friend, forever? So now what's happening is there's this noise that's coming at them. And now Jehoshaphat is recognizing that God is king. But now he's questioning, saying, God, why is this happening? Weren't we supposed to receive the promise of this land that you had given to Abraham? What's going on here? There shouldn't be any problems now. We should be able to live in it and, you know, be blessed and not have to worry about anything. How much more is that like the land of Canada, U.S., you know, some of these places that are free? If you're listening outside of those areas, I'm not sure what your government structure is. But in the land of Canada, which I'm from, we live in a state of freedom. We live in a state where we have the freedom of speech. But yet sometimes there's this tumultuous noise that wants to come and wants to rob you of certain things. So I'm not going to go political on any stretch of the nature here because there's something much more uh, important and much deeper here. It says, if we continue to go along here, and it says in verse number 8, And they lived in it, and they had built the a sanctuary there for thy name, saying, Should evil come upon us, and the sword of the judgment or pestilence or famine, Will we stand before this house and before thee? For thy name is in this house, and cry to thee in our distress, and thou will hear and deliver us. All right? So what we have to understand is that, again, he's saying, we live in the land that was given by God. Why is this coming to us? We're not supposed to see sword or pestilence or judgment, because God has given it to us. But they turned. So let's go down to verse number uh, let's continue to go. Let's go down to verse number 18. And it says, And Joseph had bowed his head with his face to the ground, and all Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem fell down before the Lord and worshipped him. And the Levites and the sons uh, stood up and praised with the Lord God with a very loud voice. Hmm. Interesting here. So what we have to recognize is that overall, Jehoshaphat now, after seeing all of this stuff, comes and bows his face to the ground, bows it below his knees. And that's a big thing, because what has to happen is your mind has to get below your heart sometimes. Sometimes we recognize in our heart that God is king, but sometimes in our mind we say, well, we want to do things ourselves. When we get to a point of distress, when we get to a, a, a crisis point in our lives, we have to take our mind and we have to put it right to the ground. We have to put it below our heart and allow our heart and what God has put within it to be elevated over our thoughts. And so that's what's happening here. And so what, what also begins to transpire is this. In verse number 19, it says, they stood up to praise. Now, in your, in your scriptures, there are different words for praise. And so for this one, this one happens to mean halal. And halal is the clamorously foolish, uh, you know, uh, basically the, the uh, I'm losing my words here, forgive me, the um, declaration of God, to be clamorously foolish before him, to shine, to rave, to boast. And so we have to recognize that at this particular point, after he's bowed his head and recognized that God is king, he recognizes that the situation is what it is. He comes up and he praises God in a, a fashion that's absolutely mind-boggling. 
So when we read the scriptures, we don't necessarily see that, but that's what halal means. So halal is basically the root word of hallelujah. So when we, when we say the word hallelujah, halal is the first part of that, and that's to rave, to boast, to shine, and to be clamorously foolish before the Lord. What we also have to recognize here in this text is that the army that had come forward has not attacked Jehoshaphat. All it has been is a noise. They've encamped about them. They have done nothing but sat there. And so what's happened is now Jehoshaphat has said, okay, we're going to go to prayer. We're going to go and we're going to worship. And so they call a fast and they get to that point and they go down before the Lord and they recognize who he is. And they come up and they start to shout and they start to praise and they start to magnify God because they recognize that there's something very powerful that is beginning to happen here. And so it's important for us in today's day and age that we can recognize that we can be emotional. We can have those elements of fear, but it's not something that we rest upon. You see, Jehoshaphat didn't rest upon that, even though he felt it. And God's not there saying, you know what, you're wrong for fearing. He didn't say that at all. It does say in verse number 15, Thus says the Lord to you, do not fear or be dismayed because of this great multitude, for the battle is not yours, but God's. You see, we have the awesome privilege and the blessing to know that when you're a child of God, that we can come before him and that he is a God that fights on our behalf. And, and lots of times we hear this story and lots of times we, we've read about it and, and we just think to ourselves, okay, well, that was nice for back then. But what about today? Does God still not fight on our behalf? Does God still not move through praise? Does God still not operate through his church? Does God not still release his power and his authority upon the bride of Christ, the church? You see, it's the same back then as it is today. Our God is an awesome God, and our God has power, and our God has victory, and he will not be overtaken. He will not be defeated because he went to the cross. And because he went to the cross, our Lord Jesus Christ made a mockery of everything that that old devil tried to do. And because Jesus went to the cross and won that victory, we can go to him and in his name and in his power and in his authority, we have victory and we have freedom and we and sometimes we just forget that and we think well the circumstance is greater than anything that I can pray for well I can't really just sing a song and that's going to make me feel better au contraire when you begin to get into the very things of God when you begin to step into alignment with the word of God all of a sudden you're going to start to see a shift in the things of the spirit why because there are no limits to what God has for you in your life there are no boundaries to what God can't reach. The only boundaries are the things that you set down before God. If in your mind you think that God can't do it, well, how is he going to do it? But yet when you bring that thought into captivity and put it under submission to Jesus Christ, all of a sudden the mountains, the, the armies that lie before you, the valleys that you have to go through, all of a sudden you recognize, well, that might be what's there, but I see what is greater in the spirit. I see who who it is that I serve, and he that I serve has greater power, has greater majesty, has greater might. There is nothing that's impossible for him. So when he begins to release the word from heaven through us as we begin to proclaim it, there is an anointing that comes upon you that will release the power of God on earth as it is in heaven. And so just as Israel came to a point in time where they began to uh, go to God and, and, and worship and prayer, they were rose up and there was something that began to be released and it was a sound of praise. How much more
or in today's day and age, if there's, is there this tumultuous noise that's trying to overpower you, that's trying to overtake you, that's trying to steal something from you. And just like it did back then, they became afraid. And when you become afraid, lots of times you're going to shut down. You're not going to say much. You're going to close up your mouth. But what happens now is when they begin to get their eyes focused in on God Almighty and begin to put their minds below their hearts and allow that which God has put within their hearts, knowing that they serve the risen, that they serve God Almighty, the mighty Jehovah, knowing at this particular point in time, now they understand to love the Lord your God with all your heart, your soul, your mind, your strength. And now they say, well, it's not what I see in my mind. It's not what I'm seeing because I'm bowing that below my heart and I recognize that which God has put within me. And I recognize the victory. And so I understand that as I begin to rise up in faith now, I'm not going to allow those things that, my, that I see rest in my heart, but I'm going to let the things that God has put within my heart rise up and overpower that which I'm seeing. And I'm going to begin to give him praise. And I'm going to begin to become clamorously foolish before him. And I'm going to begin to rave and boast and shine and promote the majesty of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm going to begin to exalt and I'm going to begin to magnify the Lord God Almighty. And magnification is something all it does is making it bigger. It sounds pretty simple, but lots of times we need to say, oh, my soul doth magnify the Lord. How many times do we need to get into our situations and say, okay, well, that's my situation. I don't want to make it bigger than what it is. I want to focus in on the God of all creation and make him bigger than the situation that I'm going through. Because when you begin to make him bigger, all of a sudden that situation that you're in becomes much, much smaller because now you're focusing your energies and your, and your mind and your heart on where it needs to go on the Lord God Almighty who loves you, who cares for you, who says, cast your cares upon me for I care for you. He's the one who went and bled and died on the cross. He's the one who said to the disciples when they came back to him and said, Lord, even the demons are subject to your name. And he said, no, don't rejoice that the demons are subject to, 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 uh, to you, but rejoice that your names are written in the Lamb's book of life. Listen, there's something far greater when you come to salvation to the Lord Jesus Christ, because what he does is he imputes his power and he intrinsically brings it into your very nature so that as you begin to rise up in praise, as you begin to rise up in what God has called you to do and the destiny that he has for you, it won't matter the situation because you're going to start to alter that because of him working through you, just as it was in the days of King Jehoshaphat, just as it was, they came down and they prayed and they magnified God, they blessed him and they rose up in praise. And now there was this halal that was released. Let's keep going here just a little bit more. And it says here in verse number 20, and they rose up early in the morning and went out to the wilderness. And when they went out, Jehoshaphat stood and said, listen to me, O Judah and inhabitants of Jerusalem, put your trust in the Lord your God and you will be established. Put your trust in his prophets and succeed. And verse 21, and when they had consulted with the people, he had pointed those who sang to the Lord and to those who praised him in holy attire as they went out before the army. Give thanks to the Lord for his loving kindness is everlasting. That word praised right there is the word yada in Hebrew. And yada just means to extend the hands. So there is an extending of praise. It was already going out. It was a forth telling, basically, uh, of what is to come. That our God is amazing amazing in all of his ways. Our God is love. Our God is kind. Our God is merciful. And he is going to protect us just as he did in the days of Moses. He's going to do it now. And that's what they were doing. They were proclaiming and basically prophesying ahead of time. We understand who our God is. And we're going to give him praise before we even see the end result. We're going to magnify God. And how much more do we need to do the same thing today? That no matter what situation we're in, and we need to just step back and magnify God and say we're going to give him praise and honor and glory for what he's going to do. We don't know what it's going to be, but we're going to praise him and we're going to put our trust in him and we're going to honor him because we know who our king is. And then it says in verse number 22, and when they began singing and praising, the Lord sent ambushes against the sons of Moab. That word praising there is another Hebrew word, and that's the word 
word tehillah, and tehillah is the spontaneous praise of men. So there is an aspect now where you've got three different forms of praise that are going on here. One, they were clamorously foolish. They were raving. They were boasting. They were shining the glory of God. Then they began to extend their hands and proclaim the very glory of God, his character, his victory, and who he is. And then what happens is they began singing and praising in that particular moment, this spontaneous praise, it all of a sudden begins to happen. God's presence began to show up. And when God's presence began to show up, it says that the Lord set ambushes against these people. And so what we see is lots of times we talk about this scripture and it's praise and worship that goes out before the army. And the, and the praise and the worship uh, was what caused God to move and, and, and slay the army before the Israelites. Guys, what's important to recognize here is that there is a tumultuous noise that wants to steal your praise. It wants to come and rob. It wants to come and attack you. It wants to come and take that away from your life. But what these people did in the land of Judah, they said, no, we recognize that we are the tribe of Judah. We recognize that we have been given the name of praise. And so we are going to walk into the character of the name that we have been given. If you have been called and if you are, are a born again child of God, then let me tell you something. You have been called by character into, an, into a form of praise, into a place of praise. You have a destiny to do that. And the devil wants to come and steal, kill, and destroy you. He wants to rob you of that praise. But I'm here to encourage you and I'm here to implore you that don't allow the devil and the things of this world to keep your praise hidden. But no matter what, get down. If you got to get down on your hands and knees and get your head to the ground, and then I implore you to do so, that you would magnify God, that you would get into that time when you recognize who he is, and that you would begin to release that praise and that worship, because there is not an enemy that can stand before God Almighty. It says in the word of God that even the, the mountains will melt like wax before his presence. There is nothing that can stand before him. He is awesome in all of his ways. When the devil tried to say, no, I will be like the Most High God, it wasn't anything. He, he went from heaven like a bolt of lightning. There wasn't anything that he could do. All of his power, all of his might, all of his smarts that he thought that he could take on God Almighty wasn't anything, and he got kicked out. I don't know how hard you have to be hit to be thrown from heaven like a bolt of lightning, but I'm going to tell you something. It wasn't anything but God to reach over with the backhand and knock him down, and he fell just like that. If that is the case, that God Almighty is so powerful, so awesome, and so amazing, then there is not an army, there is not a situation, there is not a disease that can overtake you when you bring yourself into alignment with the Word of God, and when you allow Him to work through you, and to release His power through you, there is nothing that is going to stop you, because God Almighty is the one that lives in you. And that praise that you release now is something that you have been called into. Remember, this is Old Testament. This is when the tabernacle was established and they could only go into the very presence of God one time a year but now through Christ we have been made into the very temples of the Holy Ghost and we can walk into the very presence of God and begin to exercise the praise and the worship and that privilege that he has given to us and as we begin to exercise those things we begin to see the very power and the release and the authority of God Almighty into our lives and I've been challenging you that when you're in a situation that you just stop Stop for a moment and that you begin to magnify God. That you just get into a mode where you say, Oh, magnify the Lord God. Oh, bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is within me, and forget not his benefits. See, sometimes we just have to stir ourselves up. We have to encourage ourselves. We have to remember that that old devil wants to take away our praise. He wants to bring you down. But God says, No, that's not where you're supposed to be because you are a temple of the Holy Ghost. You are a child of God. And he wants to elevate elevate you into the right position because that is a place that he's called you to be. He's called you to be anointed. He's called you to be filled with his spirit. He has called you into a sense of destiny. There's, uh, there's something that I had many, many moons ago, and I keep it in my Bible, and every now and then I read it. And I just want to read it to you right now because it's in reference to destiny. And it says, The eyes of the Lord run to and 
pro throughout the earth in order to show himself strong in behalf of those hearts who are fully blameless towards him. He who calls me is faithful and he will do it. I am not lukewarm. I'm not a compromiser. I'll not be conformed to this world. I'm not a loser. I'm a winner. I'm a partaker in divine nature. God indwells in my body. I run the race to win. His grace is sufficient for me. His power is made perfect in weakness. And when the enemy comes in like a flood the spirit of the Lord will raise up a standard and I am part of that standard we are soldiers in the army of salvation that God is raising up to save this world I'll not despise the day of small beginnings and we will reclaim that which a thief has stolen through tradition and ignorance the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof in the world and all who dwell therein he said that he would pour spirit out in the last days sons and daughters would prophesy young men would see visions old men would dream dreams and I'm part of this old time vision and for without it I perish for still the vision awaits its appointed time it hastens to the end and it will not fail if it seems slow I'll wait for it it will surely come it will not delay therefore I have a sense of destiny Jesus is restoring his church he is coming back for a glorious church without spot or wrinkle or blemish or any such thing it will be a triumphant church it will kick in the gates of hell and I am part of that end time move and I'll pay the price I'll give my utmost for his highest and I'll press on towards the goal of the prize of the God of God in Christ Jesus my Lord and I'm out to change my generation and I'm beginning today and I redeem the time I'll not be weighed down by the cares of this life but I'll cast my cares on him whatever this task Today, I'll do it heartily as to serve the Lord. I'll pursue excellence, for I serve the Lord God with excellence. I'll stir up the gifts within me. I'll step out in faith. I'll move in the supernatural, and I'll set the captives free in Jesus' name. For the Spirit of the Lord is upon me, and He's anointed me to preach the good news to the poor, to send me to the proclaim release to the captives, recovery to the side of the blind, to set liberty to those who are oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. I'll not limit the Holy One of Israel. I'll not be disobedient to the heavenly vision. The kingdoms of this world shall be the kingdoms of our God and His Christ. Now to Him who is able to keep me from failing and to present me without blemish before the presence of His glory with exceeding joy. To the only God, my Savior, through Christ Jesus, my Lord, be glory, majesty, dominion, authority before time and now forever. Amen and amen. I'm telling you guys, there is destiny that God has put within us. And you have a destiny to magnify and praise God. You have a destiny that you would kick in the gates of hell. And I implore you that if there's something that you've got that you just need to repeat, Get that out and start proclaiming it over your life. Just start getting back into the Word of God and seeing that praise and worship has the power to overcome the evil one. No matter what that's happening in your life, when you begin to praise, or when you begin to magnify God, God will begin to overshadow all that that seems to be overbearing to you. So get to that point of praise and worship. Get into some music and turn off all the other tumultuous noise that's around you. Don't focus in on that, but focus in on magnifying God. Focus in on proclaiming His name. Focus in on His glory. Focus in on who He is, the limitless God who can supply all your needs simultaneously. He's awesome. He's wonderful, and He loves you, and He wants to be there for you. Don't let that devil rob you or, or steal away from you. Don't let that devil have his way, but bring it all to Jesus Christ and throw it upon Him because He cares for you. And if you're born again, child of God, I implore you, get out those, those elements, get out those tools of praise, get out those moments where you can exercise that praise and just begin to glorify God. And if you don't know Jesus, then I'm imploring you to give your life over to him because he wants to bless you. He wants to, he wants to give you a new start. He wants to take away that fear and show you that he's the God of all gods and that he can move in your situation and he can give you victory he can give you peace he can give you righteousness and he can give you joy because he loves you so much give your life over to him just ask him to forgive you wash you cleanse you make you new i promise you it will be the best decision you ever make in your entire life if you've got prayer requests email 
uh, call, text, do whatever you got to do. Just get a hold of somebody that you can uh, just start to begin to share with. Don't do this alone. Uh, listen, guys, I want to bless you. I just want to pray for you before we go. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that there is such a release of praise and adoration that arises from everybody that's listening, O oh God, that they would have an excitement, that they would be stirred up, O oh God, to love you just that much more, knowing that you are the God that can do all things, knowing that you are the God that loves them so much. God, I just pray that it would just be such a sweet sound that arises to your ear. Father, I speak blessings upon everybody that's listening. Give them a great week, O oh God. God, release healing to those that need healing. Release salvation, O oh God, to those that are calling upon you, O oh God, to save them this day. Fill them to overflowing with your joy. And God, fill each and every single person with your holy fire. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Amen and amen. Guys, thank you for your time. I pray that it's been a blessing to you. Uh, and I pray that next time you go into praise and worship, that you'll go with just a different attitude of uh, magnifying God. Love you. Have a great day. In Jesus' name.